Hello and welcome to the HTML5 lecture series at SNHU. I'm Tom Adamson, visiting professor, and this is lecture 24 on CSS3 2.5D animation. Okay, let's go to our screen here just to review something. This is where we left off last time. We left off with the cube, and the cube had uh, three faces, and of course it was red, and it had the black border, and this was basically the, the, the code for the cube. And I'd like to bring your attention down here to the bottom of this code, where what we had there was top, left, and right, and then we'll come back over here, and it might be hard for you to see it, but it says top there, it says left there, and it says right. What I want to do now is I want to make this cube a lot more interesting in order to animate it, and I want to give it some texture. So we're going to stay on the screen here, and I'm just going to come over here and move some things around. What I've got here is, I'm going to bring this down, I've got a, a sample of some wood, and that's it. And notice the wood is sort of rectangular. And what I want to do is I want to uh, put the, the wood texture on this uh, cube on the left over here. And here's some tricks I have to do in order to do it. First of all, I have to remember that as I scroll up here, that the face, the height and the width of the face, of each face, was each 100 pixels. So I have to make that wood texture 100 pixels square as well. And originally it wasn't. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come down here at the bottom, where, right here, and I'm going to type in uh, the image tag, the image element. And it's IMG. And then one of the uh, attributes is the SRC attributes. SRC equals, and, and the name of the file, I'm just going to bring this down, look at the name of the file, was wood.jpg. So I'm going to come here and put in wood, W-O-O-D, dot J-P-G. That's one of the attributes. The other attribute uh, that's in the uh, image uh, tag is the height. In other words, this tell, I'm going to tell it that I want the height of that wood to be 100 pixels, just like the same size of the face, and I want the width of it to be 100 pixels. Another attribute is the width. And I want that also to be 100 pixels, okay, like, the, like so. And uh, let's do that like this. And then we'll, we'll close it off. It's a void element. And let me stretch this out just a bit. Okay, there it is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come here and I'm going to copy this. Whoops. Let me do a control S to save it. I'm going to take this right here. I'm going to do a control C to copy. I'm going to come right in here because I want it on every face. And do a control V to paste it. Do a control V to paste it. Right in here. And now do a control S to save it. Then come over here to refresh it. And now I have uh, a wood texture on my cube. What I can also do, I can come back over here where it says Web, WebKit Transform right here where it says WebKit Transform and says Scale. I can now make it larger if I wish right here. I can make that a 2 and I'm going to do a Control S to save it and when I do I'm going to now uh, refresh it. I'm going to come back over here to the screen what I've done now is hopefully I've made this a lot more interesting uh, in terms of how it looks. And I can take any kind of a texture, uh, download free textures from the internet, and make the, the 3D model or the 2.5D model, uh, I should say, look a lot more interesting. What I want to do now is I want to go to the board here. So if we can come over to the board, please. And I've got my 2.5D box here, which looks like so, okay? And it's a little bit more interesting now. It's got, it's got a wood texture on it. And here's the box. What I'd like to do, I'd like to put a shadow under it. Because if I can put a shadow under it, it's going to look uh, more uh, 3D, so to speak. Now, 
When I put a shadow under something, we're going to consider that there's one light source. Say it's up here. When the light shines down on this, notice how the light shines down. The light goes out this way. What that means is that the shadow is generally larger generally larger than the object. It might be offset. The light might be over to the side. So here I've got this shadow offset a little bit. But the, the size of the shadow is larger than the size of the object. So what I have to do is I have to make another box here and I have to make it so that it's slightly larger than this up here than the, than the top of, of the object is. So that's what I'm going to do. So if we could go back over here to the monitor, please. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in another div element. Just bear with me. I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to do a copy and a paste. I'm coming down here to where it says cube. Now, the very first thing that I must do, I must put another face down here and I'm going to call it shadow. It's right down here at the bottom. Whoops, uh, just a minute now. Okay, I'm, I'm coming back over here to the monitor. What I did is that the shadow must be put in first because this must be drawn over the shadow. So the shadow must be drawn first then the cube is drawn over that. If I drew the shadow last, the shadow would be out here and you would lo lose the illusion. So all I've done is I put a, uh, a, a new div element here with an ID of shadow. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to stay on here, but I'm now going to have a selector that will say shadow and then make it so that uh, it'll appear down here. So we're going to stay on the screen. And I'm going to uh, I did a control C. I copied it from someplace. Bear with me so you don't have to be bored with all my, my slow typing. Here's what I've done. I'll show you here. This is my selector now, shadow. I want the height to be 100 pixels. I want the width to be 100 pixels. The background's going to be black. The position's going to be absolute. I had to play around with where the top and the left was in order to get it just right. And now what I needed to do with, with the shadow is I needed to rotate it 30 degrees, skew it uh, on x minus 30 degrees, and then scale it up. This is scale x and scale y. Well, the question is, where did I get this WebKit transform? Where did I get the 30 degrees from and the skew x minus 30 degrees? Where I got it from, I got it from the top because the shadow must have the same shape as the top. So staying on this, let's see what I, what I had with the top. I'm coming back, back over here. If you look for the top box, I had the, trans the rotate 30 degrees, the skew x minus 30 degrees. So I had to do the same thing down here when I did it for the shadow. Now keep in mind for the web kit, when I have the web kit out here, that means it's for Google Chrome. Uh, if this code doesn't work on Google Chrome by the time you try it, just take out the web kit part. So what I'm going to do now, we're going to stay on the screen here. I'm going to do a control S to save this and I'm going to come over here and do a refresh and there's my shadow. So now I have more of an illusion that it's actually sort of floating in space and the way I did it is that I had to copy down here, I had to copy what was actually up here and I had to enlarge it somewhat. And it's as if the light's a little bit off to the left here. And of course, I could move the shadow around as I wish. Uh, and make the, the further away I make the shadow, the bigger it should be. Because the light comes out this way. Okay? Now, 
The next thing I want to do is I want to be able to take this and do some animation with it. Uh, see if I can make it move, see if I can make it uh, do some other things. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, uh, jQuery. So we're going to stay on, on this here. And I'm going to scroll up here for the jQuery. And what I need to do is I need to access the jQuery library. And in order to do that, I'm going to come up here right to where style is up at the top here and do a control V to paste. And I have jscript equals system resource script jQuery.js. You might say, well, where's that at? Well, if I come here and I look in my folder, there's my jQuery right here, my jQuery JavaScript. So that will allow me to access that library. And I can now use jQuery functions, which is what I'm going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make, uh, make a button so that uh, I can use the buttons to have something happen. And in order to make the buttons, I'm going to um, put a button right here uh, outside of the uh, outside of the cube. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put it right here. So here's my button. And I've got to make my button, I've got to give it an ID because I'm going to have more than one button. And I'll call it B1. That, that makes sense, right, for button one. And I'm going to put something on it. And I'm going to put hide show. And the reason why is because that's what the button's going to do. And then I'm going to put the closing tag for button. And I'm going to do a control S to save it, come back over here and refresh it. And there's my button. I don't know how well you can see it. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Right up there for hide and show. Well, if I click on it, it won't do anything. Uh, but that's where I'm going to use one of the um, one of the, the, the functions from jQuery. And let's see what that is. I got to put in the script. I'm going to do a control C to copy it. And here I've got to put in the script element. There's the opening tag. There is the closing tag. And then inside here is where I'm going to put And let's see if this makes sense, what I've got here, all this stuff here. There's the document ready function. It's going to use this selector, B1. Well, what's B1? B1 is the button right here. Let me, let me, uh, that's this guy right here, his selector, B1. When I click on that, I want the cube. Well, what's the cube? That's this right here. That's this whole thing, including its shadow. I want to do a function. It's going to toggle. Well, what kind of toggle is this going to do? Well, let's see. If I come over here now and I click on that button, hide show, just a minute. Can we kill it? Yeah. Let me, let me. What I've done here is I've added three buttons. I've added three button elements. I have button and, and what I've done for an attribute, I've used the ID and I've, I've made the value B1. I called it hide slash show. I have another button here. The ID is now B2. That's called fade. And the button here, the ID is B3. That's called animate. And I'm going to be using jQuery in order to do this. So let me see what I what, what happens when I click on these buttons. I'm going to go back over here and then I'm going to go on the cube. So here's my hide show button. I'm going to click on the hide show button and it hides, then it shows. So it toggles back and forth. And this is using jQuery. Now I can make it fade. It takes a while for it to fade out. I can make it fade back in. There it comes back in. 
I can now animate it. And notice there are several things happening at the same time. Not only is it moving around the screen, but it's also fading in and fading out uh, while it's doing that. So let's look at the, at the code for, for doing this. Let's go up here and let's look at this one here for B1. Notice that the selector, this is jQuery, and notice that the jQuery selector was B1. And so this is what's going to happen. I'm going to, when I click it, uh, the cube, which I've identified here, is now going to toggle. So when I click it, it'll, it'll disappear. When I click it again, it'll come back. And so the cube, as you recall, was from down here. And I'll scroll down here. That was the, what enclosed everything right here. This, this was the parent element that enclosed all of these child elements, which were the shadow and the three faces. So whatever I do to the cube, the same thing happens to all these elements. If I come up here to this one, the selector is now B2, and this is a click function again, and here's the cube, and now it's a fade toggle and it takes 3,000 milliseconds for it to fade out, and it's toggle again. If I come down here to this one for B3, and this is the one that did the animations, here's all the animations that are done in using jQuery. What I can do here now is I can make it move to the left, change its opacity, and have that for 2,000 milliseconds, meaning two seconds, do the same thing again, and it'll move, and it'll take four seconds to do that. Do it again, it takes three seconds to do that. Bring it back to where it was, put its opacity back to one so you can see it real good, and that takes four seconds. So I could keep putting different things in here for it to do that. Uh, the whole point is, is that all of this was done using Notepad. Uh, all of it is free to use, and it simply uses jQuery uh, in order to do that. There's one more, th stay on the screen there, there's one more thing I'd like to illustrate and that was in using jQuery UI. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come to this and here's my cube. I'm going to enlarge the screen again. And what I can do with this is I can, I can drag it. I'm holding down the left mouse button and dragging it around the screen. This is using jQuery UI that we uh, discussed in our previous lecture. So obviously I could also use jQuery with this, make it animate, make it fade, and do other, other kinds of things. Okay, back on me now, please. All right, that's it for this lecture uh, uh, 24 on 2.5D animation, and thank you for attending.